Hallelujah. This is our season of gratitude and thanksgiving. Gratitude and thanksgiving. This morning I want to share on something titled, Gratitude Remembers. Gratitude Remembers. Gratitude Remembers. We live in a society, a generation where people take things for granted. People just feel entitled to whatever benefit or help they receive from people. That's why you do something for someone and they'll say thanks. What happens to thank you? What happens to God bless you? I appreciate, I celebrate you. Some will, some will not even call. Some will send a message and say thanks. This is the generation we find ourselves in. But if you must be one who is filled with gratitude, it simply shows that you are always in the habit of remembering. Gratitude doesn't forget, it remembers. So don't join the bandwagon of people who always send one word, thanks. Don't join the bandwagon of people who have this entitlement mentality. And you find people get angry at God, get angry at the church, because they feel some of the things they were asking for or requesting for wasn't granted them. And because of that, God is not God. God is unfaithful. God is not good. Oh, that church, useless church. I applied for scholarship and they didn't give me scholarship. So for that, I will not know. That you are still standing is enough to be grateful. That you are not in the streets raving mad is enough to be grateful. That you still have your two legs, your hands, your body, your mind intact is enough to be grateful. Gratitude remembers. And what is gratitude? It is the ability to show thanks for the things you have and the things you are grateful for. Gratitude is the ability to show thanks for the things you have and for the things you are grateful for. So you must always be in the habit of asking yourself, what am I grateful for? What has the Lord done for me? What do I have? Don't ever come to a point where you say you don't have. It's not about money now. That you still have life. Is that not a having? It's enough to say thank you. That you can afford to eat three square meal. Some persons eat once a day. Some eat from the trash. For you, you walk into a fine restaurant with good clothes. It's enough to be grateful. Gratitude is the ability to show thanks for what you have and what you are grateful for. Gratitude is a conscious, positive emotion one can express when feeling thankful for something, whether tangible or intangible. It is a conscious, you must be fully aware. That is why it's mind-blowing when you give someone something or you do something for someone and they say, I'm sorry, I forgot. How are you forgetting? Two things are involved. It's either you trivialized you trivialize the favor that was done to you or you are a full-blown ungrateful person. It is a conscious, positive emotion that is expressed when you are grateful for things whether it is tangible or intangible but many believers find themselves in the school of the tangible it's only when they can see the car it's only when they can see the house it's only when they can see the land it's only when they can see the alert it's only when they can buy that this is only when they can marry when they see the husband or the wife that is when they will not be grateful no be grateful for the intangible and i love the teaching our bishop taught in Abuja, beautiful teaching, great word. It opened my mind to begin to realize that sometimes we just take a lot of things for granted. So somebody is standing and saying, Oh, I thank God for life. You will just somebody will just look and say, Is that one testimony? And the person saying it is breathing. Be grateful for the tangible and the intangible. What are these intangible? Salvation. So when they ask you to be grateful to God, don't just stand and murmur and, and begin to now. No. 
that he redeemed you and made you the righteousness of himself is enough to say, ah, God, I thank you. There are several billions of people, atheists, Muslims, traditional worshippers, whatsoever religion, whatsoever people that do what they do. But God saw you and looked out for you and through his word reached you. It's enough. I love the, the quote Pastor put this morning. He says, you are saved to save others. Your salvation is not just for you to make heaven. You are saved to reach out to others. That is why at every point you should be fully aware of who you are and what you have received. When this consciousness is in you, you will always be grateful. You will always be grateful. When you walk, you are grateful. When you are talking, you are grateful. When you dress, you are grateful. When I see the way some, especially ladies dress, I, I just see that, oh, this person has not gotten it. This person is not yet clear. You just feel my body is my body, myself is myself. Allow me to dress the way I like. Allow me to, no. It says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You were designed, created to bring God glory. So every day you wake up, you ask yourself, this dress I'm dressing, is it giving God glory? Those men look at me and say, ah, I thank God for her life. I thank God for his life. Gratitude remembers. It is a conscious emotion that shows that you are grateful for the tangible and intangible. I was talking with my husband last week or so. I said, when we were discussing, we said, some people like to pray for unmerited favor, free help, free whatever it is. But there's nothing free. Because somebody is paying the price. If you enter a restaurant and they say it's on the house, does it now mean that that food that was given to you or that drink or whatever that was given to you will not be paid for? I said, if you enter a restaurant or whatever place you enter and they say eat, drink, it's on the house, does it mean that that thing that was given to you is free? Somebody is bearing the, it could be the management, it could be the person that is serving you, but somebody is paying the price. So for every unmerited favor you enjoy, carry this consciousness that somebody is paying the price. And when you carry this consciousness, it helps you to be grateful for what you have received. It helps you to be grateful. Always be conscious. Thanks. Oh Jesus, thank you. Or make it not be like say I'm on a, I'm on a. No, you don't come before Him like that. And then you want Him to do something mind blowing. You want Him to cause a change in your life. You want Him to do great things for you. And then the little He's doing for you, you are not appreciative. If it were you that is always giving somebody something, and the person is never saying thank you, how will you feel? How much more God our Father? Gratitude remembers. We are commanded to be thankful. Colossians 3.15 says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Tell somebody, be thankful. Be thankful. Say it, say it, shout, it's a commandment. Say, be thankful. be thankful. Don't ever come to a point where your, some of us, our entitlement is, even God is shocked at the entitlement. Be thankful. It's a commandment. In Genesis, when he said, be fruitful and multiply, he didn't have me to come and start saying, I command you. No. The word be is a verb. And they taught us in primary school that a verb is an action word or what? A doing word. So anywhere you see be, if he says be grateful, it means you don't have any reason not to be grateful. You don't have any reason not to be thankful. If he says, be fruitful and multiply, you don't have any reason to be fruitless. You don't have any reason not to be able to recreate or multiply your gifts, your talents, whatsoever he has embedded in you. So we are commanded in Colossians 3.15 to be thankful. You must find the reason every day you wake up. Don't just wake up and you're always in a hurry to leave the house, go to school, go to work, go to your business. No. Be thankful. Some people slept and didn't wake up. Some it was a slight headache and that was it. Some were walking and just slumped. But you, you've been having migraine, brain grain, all the kinds of brain, and yet you're still alive. Come on. You see how, how ungrateful believers can be. Somebody had malaria, and that was how the person died. You, you had three pluses, four even, and you are still standing. You can talk, you can argue. It's enough to be grateful. 
Somebody wants to go and buy biscuit and that's how that's how car hit the person. You you have been going to buy chingon separately. It's enough to be grateful. They say let's go to Abuja. Oh, you entered the post, nothing happened. Or you even went to Nokoja and bought things. But yet you forgot that some persons were just going to Ecom and that was how they lost their life. It is enough to be grateful. You must find a reason to be thankful. Find a reason to be thankful. If you thank him, he does more. Gratitude is the seed for more. That is why we saw Jesus all through the scriptures. Before anything, he says, Father, I thank you. Because he knew that if you want more, you should thank more. If you want more, you should thank more. If you want more, you should thank more. Be grateful. I love the way Amplified Classic put this particular scripture. If you have it, please flash it. Colossians 3.15, Amplified Classic, it says, And let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule, act as an umpire continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your minds in that peaceful state, to which as members of Christ's one body, you were also called to live, and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. Be thankful, be appreciative, giving thanks to God always. Giving praise to God always. So that is why God can say David is a man after my heart. Because even, in the, even when he sins, even when he's wrong, even in the midst of wars and issues and all manner of things, David always find time to be grateful. He always found time to say, ah, this is my God that is always looking out for me. Thank you. So it's not just enough to bear the name David. Be grateful. Be a grateful person. Be a grateful person. It says, be appreciative, giving praise to God always. A few years ago, that was four or five years ago, I and my husband went to Oka for a meeting. And so we decided to go to the car wash to wash his car while we were still waiting for the service to begin. And while we were there, it was a filling station that also had a car wash. So he, he got his well and went to, you know, wash the car just by the side. So they had a sit out, a small sit out, and we were just there sitting. Now, while all these things were happening, there was a trailer that uh, a mechanic was trying to repair. So while, while the guy was trying to work on the trailer, I don't know whether it was a battery or whatever, exploded, and the acid from that battery entered into his eyes. And all the guy could say was, he was just shouting, Jesus, Jesus. So we heard the loud, it was a loud boom. So we had to come and now say, ah, what's happening? And the guy was just there weeping, wailing. He opened his eyes and we couldn't see the, what's it called now? The pupil, the black stuff. It was all white, with tears rolling from his eyes. And I just sat down. Me, I couldn't even shout Jesus. I couldn't. I just sat and I began to ask. I said, this is someone that came to find his daily bread. He, he didn't go to rob. He didn't go to kidnap somebody. This is his, he's a mechanic, this is his. So the only error or the only fault or the only sin he had seen in this issue now is to present himself to work. But you, you have been doing all manner of things, but yet his mercies has kept you. The Bible says it is by his mercies that we are not consumed. Be grateful. Don't take his mercies for granted. Don't take his goodness for granted. Be thankful. From that moment, he began to frame my prayer. So anytime I go, that's why sometimes if you hear me pray, I always say, thank you for journey mercies that I enjoy. You go out, you, you post, you make your money, make your sales. Did you say, Father, thank you for bringing the people that will patronize me? Did you say, Father, thank you for putting some certain kind of wealth in my hands? At every stage, there is always something to be grateful. There is always something to be grateful for. It's now left for you. So don't be ungrateful. Gratitude remembers. It is God's will for us that we give him thanks. 
It says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything give thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So if you are sitting down and looking for God's will, I've come to show you that his will is that you give him thanks in everything. It says, with every, with every, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto him. So in everything, you are broke now, give him thanks. You are rich, give him thanks. You are sick, give him thanks. You are healthy, give him thanks. In everything, you missed your exam. Give him thanks. You told yourself that by 20, by 30, you should be married. And you're 40, you're not married. Give him thanks. In everything, give him thanks. You've been married for six years. No issue. Give him thanks. In everything, give him thanks. Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You are trekking all over Calabar. Give him thanks. When you give him thanks... You, 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 you hasten or you, you, how do I put it now? You make the delivery of your car fast. It's not when you are just trekking this kind of suffer, when we all this suffer. And no, you can't get nothing from God murmuring. You are job, you don't even have money for both. You have 150 for keke. Enter it with joy. In everything, give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Should have that dream job, and yet, anyway, I send my CV, they reject it. Give him thanks because this is the will of God. He says, You were created to bring him pleasure. How do you bring him pleasure? It's not just enough to answer present in church, it's not just enough to enter your unit and serve, it's not just enough to present yourself to him. No, how you show him pleasure is by your attitude of gratitude. Be grateful at all times, give him thanks. Give him thanks. When he says you come before him, you bring your strong reason. Some of us, they, we don't have half reason. We, are, we just come before him murmuring and lamenting and complaining. No, these things ought not to be so. And so you find believers die broke, die poor, even when they know that their father is the governor general of the universe. So how, you, how do you see Christians being in want and lack? And yet, they says the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof a thousand a castle on a thousand hills belong to him so how you see that you still find believers complain of lack complain of want complain of all manner of things they ought not to complain even to the point of spouse and children he says none will want her mate he says be fruitful and multiply and have dominion and yet you find believers who have no dominion who are fruitless who don't multiply nothing why? Because of their perpetual state of ingratitude. In everything, give thanks. Give thanks. Oh, I want to burn four boys and he gave you four girls. Give thanks. Give thanks. Oh, I've not even yet gotten the fruit of the womb. Give thanks. By now, I should have made 600 billion and now I'm looking for urgent 2K. Give thanks. That you still have the mind to think how to even look for the 2k it's enough to say father thank you gratitude doesn't forget it remembers it remembers be grateful anytime we are grateful to god he shows our love and reverence for him anytime we are grateful to god he shows our love and reverence for him 1 Corinthians 8 verse 3. I love the Amplified Classic because it broke things down. So let's see the Amplified Classic of 1 Corinthians 8 verse 3. It says, let's see King James first, then I'll read mine. 1 Corinthians. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. If any man loves God, the same is none of him. You can read this King James translation and just feel okay. Love God. Okay, I love God. That means God knows me. And yet God does not even know whether you have G in your alphabet. 
Let me show you what classic says. Amplified classic says. It says, But if one loves God truly, with affectionate reverence, prompt obedience, and grateful recognition of his blessing. Did you get that? If one loves God truly, with affectionate reverence, prompt obedience, and grateful recognition of his blessings. So it is expected of believers to always recognize his blessings. That is why that song says, Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So the, 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 the man that loves God is the man that always counts his blessings is the one that doesn't forget the benefits of God is the one that is always always grateful with grateful recognition of God's blessing he says he is known by God recognized as worthy of his intimacy and love and he is owned by him and can I tell you if God loves you you can't lack anything he will cause men to favor you he will cause men to fight. You see, I love the, the, the scripture that says, strangers will build your walls. You enjoy this if you love him. So it's not enough to be in, a, in, a, in the ocean, in the choir, in whatever. Be grateful. Always count your blessings. Don't forget, God has been good to you. This year, you started broke and you are ending semi-broke. See, tell him thank you. 24 hours is too much for God to turn the life of a man around. In one minute, God can raise a man from the donkey and set him up in the palace. In one minute. So keep believing. Keep praising him. Keep thanking him. Don't stop thanking him. Don't stop. You have planned that by 25th December, new clothes, new shoe, new bag, new wig, new, and yet nothing. You are even trying to look for transport to go home to eat rice. Give him thanks. Give thanks to God at all times. It says, the man that loves God is the man that is grateful to him. And in turn, he is recognized by God. He's worthy of his intimacy and love. Ingratitude has the ability to keep you in the same spot for a very long time. Ingratitude has the ability to keep you in the same spot for a very long time. Go and ask the Israelites. A journey of about 11 days turned to 40 years. How do you explain that? So they were just going around the wilderness, just round and all the journey. And all through this trip, God was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And they were going around the same spot for 40 years. No wonder he came and said, you have come past this mountain long enough. Turn not toward Ingratitude can cause you to be in the same spot. Always be grateful. And you can see how the children, always, the children of Israelites, they, they always complained, they always murmured, they always grumbled. Ah, little wonder God had to keep them there for those years to teach them a lesson. Because he knows the way you are acting. If I bring you into Canaan, that means the speed at which you will forget and abandon me will be so great. So instead of you to enter Canaan not being grateful, it's better for me that you remain here. And that is why you find believers praying to God for breakthrough, for money, for favor, for help. And God is looking at them and saying, no, you are not ready. This place you are praying for, this position, these desires you have, you are not ready to handle it because he knows if it gives it to you, it will wreck you. If he gives it to you, you will turn your back from him. Be grateful. One of the root causes of depression is ingratitude. Why are you depressed? Why is a child of God one who is housing the Holy Spirit? How can you be with the Spirit that is joy, love, peace? All good things and yet a believer is contemplating suicide. You are a very ungrateful person. Ingratitude. Depression. 
That's why he said in his word, he says, for the spirit of heaviness, give them a garment of praise. Praise is the antidote, antidote for depression. It's not just sitting at home and just saying, God, bring me out, all this is like that. No. Start praising. Start thanking him. Start being grateful. We hear a lot of stories and we are just like, if you know half of what we go through every day and yet still stand, still smile, still come, still preach, even help others, and you know half of what we pass through on a daily basis. Some of you, even if Jesus appears, even if Jesus comes to life and tells you answer the call, you will not answer. But in all of these things, we are grateful for the privilege to stand and teach people, watch people grow, watch people bring out the, their, their full potential. It's enough to say, oh God, thank you for this singular privilege. Don't be depressed. Don't allow the enemy to lie to you. He will sell a lie to you and tell you, no, leave that thing. Look at all these things. You say to a new year resolution, 2023, I will hammer, I will make it, I will excel, I will dominate, I will whatever, I will fire, and yet nothing. So he begins to suggest to you that God is not faithful. You tell him, shut up and get out. Shut up and get out. You don't even have any business conversing with the devil. He says, resist him. Rebuke him. He said, get out. My God is faithful. I don't know how you want to paint it, but this God that I'm serving, this is my own God, is faithful. Ingratitude is one of the reasons why a lot of believers are depressed. You will not hear that a pastor committed suicide. A pastor, a choir director, hung himself in his room immediately after service. How you are leading, you are leading people to worship, and yet, how do you explain these things? Always be grateful. Always be grateful. I wrote here. I said, always be thankful, regardless of whatever situation you find yourself in. Always be thankful, regardless of whatever situation you find yourself in. Gratitude remembers. Let's see Deuteronomy 8 verse 11 to 14. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 11 to 14. It says, Beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God. Be careful that you don't forget the Lord your God. Take heed that you don't forget the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes which I command thee this day verse 12 he says lest when thou hast eaten and art full and hast built goodly houses and dwelt there so you see the reason why some people quickly forget God is because they are full because when you were empty you were always in church you were always in service you always pray you always worship but the moment you began to get full or you were filled up or your hands were not able to build good houses you drive a good car you now see that there are tendencies that you forget how God has brought you from where you were to where you are now he says take heed that you don't forget the Lord your God 13 he says and when thy heads and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied and all that thou hast is multiplied then thy heart be lifted up and thou forget the Lord thy God which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of one day don't forget God don't forget him don't forget how he saved you don't forget how he redeemed you don't forget how he always comes true for you he says lest your heart be lifted up and you forget that is why he said you shall remember the Lord your God because it is him that gives you power to get well so maybe the reason why you are not yet living in prosperity is because you have forgotten that it is God that can give you the power to get well don't forget because if you forget, you'll be, you'll be reminded. 
And most times, when they remind you, it's not always sweet. It's not always beautiful. Go and ask Nebuchadnezzar. Woke up one morning and say, Ah, look at Babylon that my hands have built. Oh, wow, wow, wow. And in that instant, God didn't kill him. God didn't remove his hand and his leg. The only thing God did was to touch a knot in the brain. And that is how a reigning king of the world at that time entered into the forest and for seven years ate grasses. And God is so merciful because with all the grasses, the snakes, no bite them. Nothing happened to him. When he senses came back, he just went into the palace, freshened up. God is faithful. The God you serve is not wicked. The God you serve is not wicked. Don't forget. Don't forget. Always keep yourself in check and remember. It is foolishness to forget. Ask Nabal. You see, the guy suffered a lot. And I don't know, if I see his mother, I will ask him. I will ask her. How do you give birth to a child and you look at the child and you call the child foolishness? Nabal means foolish somebody. Just as they born you now, gave you Sinclair, gave you Thelma, gave you Princess. Somebody's mother carried him for 10 months and gave birth to him and called him foolish. This one, you are a foolish child. And the child has not yet grown. If the child had grown to 10, 12, 15, and is now behaving somehow, you can say, ah, this one, I changed your name to foolishness. This is a child you gave birth to. So everywhere Nabal presented himself, what is your name? I'm foolish. And you see how his foolishness killed him. What killed Nabal was not that David came and attacked him. He, the wife, met Abigail, met David, apologized. And came and told him, Omo, if I don't do this thing, see what David was planning to do. David was planning to. He didn't do anything. The Bible says, in that moment, his heart smote him. And he died. Because he forgot how David, when David sent him, he says, tell, tell Nabal, it is me and my guys that have been taking care of his flock, taking care of his sheep, taking care of his cattle, taking care of his guys. And now what I'm asking for is not too much. You are throwing party. You are doing celebrity banquet. Let me come and join you and celebrate. And Nabal says, who is David? Who is that guy? Why? Because he forgot how David was always the one killing the bears, fighting the battles while he was on the throne, sitting, drinking, enjoying himself. So don't forget. It is foolishness to forget. Don't forget. God is faithful. Tell somebody God is faithful. No wonder David said in Psalms 103, verse 1 to 5, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So not just my mouth to do the blessing. My heart should do the thanking. My liver should do the thanking. My kidney should do the thanking. My intestines should do the thanking. Everything that is within me should bless his holy name. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your iniquities who heals all your diseases who redeemed your life from destruction who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles don't forget his benefits thank him for salvation thank him for redemption Thank him that you are still intact. Thank him. Thank him. Don't stop thanking him. Don't forget his benefits. You see, God is not unjust. He doesn't fight. The only thing God forgets is your sins. Why? He said that I will forgive your sins and I will not remember it. That is the only place God said, I will forget. He doesn't forget. He's not unrighteous like man. But as the, in the issues, as touching your iniquities, your sins, he says, I will forgive you and I will not remember it. So thank him. Thank him. Whatever sin you did in the past is in the past. He has forgiven you. Thank him. While you are thanking him, don't allow the enemy to bring up suggestions in your mind that make you feel you are unworthy of God's love. You deserve everything you get. Every good thing you get. Thank him. He forgives your sins. 
He heals your diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. He causes you to be satisfied with good things. Thank Him. One of the beautiful things about David is that he was not just in the habit of thanking God. He was also in the habit of remembering people who at different stages of his life came through for him. We can see in 2 Samuel 9 verse 1, he says, And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I might show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? David always remembers. So if you want to be like David, always remember. Most misbehavior is rooted in forgetting. Most misbehavior. That is why when the ark was brought back to Israel and David danced, he was so excited that he didn't know whether his clothes was coming off, his wigs were falling off, his shoes, whatever. He was just happy. And Michal said, look at how you are dancing shamelessly, naked in front of the maidens. And David sensed that she forgot. So he had to remind her, the person I am dancing for is the one that chose me in the stead of your father and your brother. Why should I not dance before him? And because of her forgetful nature, she became the only woman in the Bible who died barren, no child. So there are a lot of consequences of ingratitude. Don't be an ungrateful person. It is unrighteousness to forget. Hebrews 6 verse 10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. God is not unrighteous to forget. That is why I said earlier, the only place he said he will forget anything is your sin. When you come before him sincerely and genuinely, you repent, he says, I will forgive you. And I want to remember your sins. You limit God when you forget. You limit God when you forget. Psalms chapter 78 verse 41. Psalms 78 verse 1 says, Yes, the turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. How did they do this? 42. He says, They remembered not His hand nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. But all of these attacks was to ensure that the believer forgets. How can you remember? How can you remember? Number one, build memorials. To remember, build memorials. Build memorials. If you don't document things, you will forget. Because of my nature, I tend to forget things a lot. That is why virtually everywhere around the house, there is pen and paper somewhere. So that as it's flashing in, I'm writing it down. Learn to document. Count your blessings. So if you don't document your blessings, how will you not be able to count? That is why even when they tell you, oh, you start counting, you still can't remember. Why? Because you have not built any memorial. To remember, build memorials. Joshua 4 verse 4. Joshua 4 verse 4. Then Joshua called the 12 men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan and take up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel that this may be a sign among you that when your children Ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then ye shall answer them, That the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when he passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Now it was not just enough for Joshua to, to remind them of building memorials. Jacob himself was a man who always built memorials. If you read scriptures about Jacob, he says, and there he laid an altar, and there he made an altar, and there he made an altar. The essence of these altars was so that even if he wants to forget, maybe in turning back, 
when he sees the altar that he had laid and he maybe he calls that place Jehovah Nisi because God or Jehovah Jireh because God has provided it simply reminds him of how oh at this point he was going through this and yet God came through for him so if you want to perpetually be in a grateful state learn to write things learn to document God's goodness learn to build memorials it says carry up these stones so that when your children in times to come wake up and ask you oh what's this for oh why did they build so you will tell them it will be a memorial of how the Lord had come through for all of us. So build memorials. Build memorials. If you want to remember, deal with strange company. You company yourself with people who murmur, who complain. Ah, this kind of life. Okay, now that we have finished school, so what are the, what are we going to use our life for, to do? Okay, while we are still thinking, let's start doing wrongs. Let's start doing hookup. Let's start doing this. Let's join Yahoo. Let's start scamming people. Let's do this. Let's do this. Because when you put yourself in that state, you are simply saying that God is not enough. That God doesn't have what it takes to bless you. That God doesn't have what it takes to promote you. But the scripture tells us that promotion comes neither from the east, from the west, from the north, or from the south. But it comes from the Lord. So don't put yourself in a state where you feel God is incapacitated to help you. He's the all-present one, the all-breasted God. You can't, if God can't, because of his blessing, tell man, not bless princess. That's not the God we say. He says he gives to all men liberally. Unbelievers, believers, anyone that has his breath, he gives liberally to them. So deal with strange company. First Kings 11 verse 1 to 5, he says, but King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, one of the nations concerning which the Lord, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonites, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Deal with strange company. Solomon began so well. That is why Paul was writing to the Galatians. He told them, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not know the truth? Are you so foolish? In verse 2, are you so foolish that you have begun in the flesh, in the spirit, and you are now being made perfect in the flesh? Solomon was a man who followed his father's footsteps and journeyed with God such that God gave him wisdom that no man on earth possessed. But we saw that because he started looking for what was not looking for him, had 700 princesses, wives, 300 concubines, and all of these things, you can't have this multitude of people and your heart not be taken away. Deal with strange company. All your friends are prostitutes. It's just a matter of time for you to join them. Deal with strange company. Sometimes it's important you just sit back, write down all your friends, evaluate which one is helping me to fulfill purpose. Which one is helping me to fulfill God's assignment of my life? Which one is helping me to fulfill destiny? Anyone that's not helping you, you just shift them one corner. You want to answer that you are friendly, so the whole nation is your friend. It's just a matter of time before they will steal your heart away from God and begin to tell you how they ask God for this and God did not come through for them. Then you, you will start listening to the matter and the next thing you too is now found in the camp of the ungrateful. So if you want to be grateful, if you want to always be in check, remembering God's goodness and God's faithfulness, deal with strange company. Hallelujah. The third thing you need to deal with 
if you must remember, is deal with the spirit of aging. One of the, should I say, sicknesses or fruits of the aged is that they forget. And now you can't blame them. But it's just there. It's what it is. They forget. Oh, at a point, my grandma, even now, if I call her and she'll start asking me, who am I? I'll have to start explaining, explaining, explaining. She's over 90. I'll have to start explaining, 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 explaining who am I to my grandma. She'll not say, oh, okay. Sometimes, I know that, okay, she has not still remembered. But okay, let us believe we have remembered. So deal with the spirit of aging. you find young people all over the world who are very young but yet very old. In their disposition, in their confessions, in their attitudes. A young person, you forget that you're supposed to wake up early and come to church. Oh, okay, I've opened up at 8.30. Oh, okay, okay, even if it's 9.30, I'm still early. No. Deal with the spirit of aging. Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1 says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw near, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. The time is coming where you want to dance, but you can't dance. You want to do a lot of things, but you can't do it. So he's simply telling you to remember him now that you are young. Now that you are so filled with, with blood running through your, your veins. Now that you are very much alive. Remember your creator now that you are young. Because the evil days are coming. The years are drawing near. Don't forget. Don't forget. If you must remember, deal with devaluation. If you must remember, deal with devaluation. Devaluation is the mindset that calls precious things common. Deal with that mindset. Deal with that. Imagine he says, you don't cast spells to swine. Else they will turn and render you. Else they will turn and say, you didn't do anything for them. Oh, is it this small son? Others are giving their mates 3 million, 5 million. You is 4,000 you are giving. Eh? What will I use this 4,000 and do? But the person saying this, literally begged for the 4,000. Are you understanding me? Are you seeing how ungrateful people can be? Deal with the mindset of devaluation. Don't devalue things. Your hands can give you 4K. Somebody gave you 4K. And you are complaining that, oh, you're supposed to, you have so much money now. Why didn't you make it 50K? Are you kidding me? Deal with every mindset that will cause you to call precious things. Come on. It could be men that God has sent to your life. The reason why you won't get the best out of these men is because of your constant devaluation. Oh, everybody is a pastor. Oh, everybody, yeah, people are looking out for me. So you don't now know who you should always, when you are praying, you thank God. Oh, if this pastor great. Oh, God, thank you for pastor great. For always praying for me. For always counseling me. For always instructing me. For always looking out for me. Anybody you devalue, you can't get blessed by that person. If you devalue God, you can't get blessed by God. If you devalue men, you can't get blessed by men. That's why he told you, give honor to whom honor is due. Give fear to whom fear is due. Give tribute to whom tribute is due. Deal with the mindset of devaluation. Exodus 16 verse 14. We'll read it down to 15. Exodus 16, 14, it says, And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as the half frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna. Why? For they wished not what it was. And Moses said unto them, this is the bread which the Lord had given you to eat. You requested for bread, he gave you bread. Why not be grateful for the bread? You just came because you don't know what it is. You stop it to say, oh wow, what's this? Oh, let me test it. You just came and said, ah, what is this? And the way you are even saying the what it is simply shows that you don't read. But you see how people can be. Even after being ungrateful, I thought they would not pick it up and eat. After asking, what is this? They still picked it up and ate. So why be ungrateful? Your hands couldn't provide for your needs and God sent a man, a lady into your life to help you till you are strong. 
Then you now turn around and say, ah, what, what have you done for me? Don't be ungrateful. Don't devalue people. Don't devalue things. Numbers 11, 5 and 6, 5 and 6 says, But remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers, the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. God gave you a food cooked whether by angels or by himself and all you could compare the food to was cucumber and garlic and onions you didn't even say watermelon or pineapple or mango at least fruits that when you are eating it you are happy it's onions that you are crying as you are eating it it's garlic that don't have taste it just give you bad breath all through the day then cucumber that is just what one of the foods I hate is cucumber. I just eat it just because. But I don't know what it does. It don't have taste. It's not sweet. And that is what you are comparing heaven's food to. Ah, don't be ungrateful. They were so angry and so ungrateful that they now say that their soul is dried away. Their soul is dried because they do not eat cucumber and garlic and onions. But they forget that all through these 40 years, they didn't buy clothes. So they forget that all through these 40 years in the wilderness, their shoes were literally growing alongside them. It was not tearing because nobody had time to look for a bookie to come and fix your shoe. Or there was no even boutique. You say, oh, someone has opened shop here. Where did, where did you even come out with Egypt from it? People, people, I don't know. Before you start being ungrateful, calm down first, sit down, think it, think it very, very well. You came out with gold oh, and some cattle and some small, small things. You didn't come out with all your, you didn't even have business. You were slaves, servants, and he caused your dresses to grow alongside, no tear, no nothing, no patch, patch, your shoes, all the trekking, trekking. Mind you, there, there was no benzo that you say you're inside car driving, cruising. It was not cruising, it was so far ahead. Walking around the wilderness for 40 years, yet your slippers did not cut like Princess home. It didn't cut. God kept it. You walk, 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 walk. In the morning, you walk. In the night, you walk. He still kept you. Then you now came to a point and said that your soul is dry. You don't have any fat. Is this thing, maybe we should find another translation. Because this, that our soul is dry, is simply like, why are we still alive now? God, cuckoo kill us. Because why are you keeping us, giving us this thing that we don't even know the health benefit? But at least cucumber we know, garlic we know, onions we know. Don't devalue things. At a point, God had to say, Moses, get out. Let me kill. Let me wipe. Let me wipe these people. They are too ungrateful. After everything I have done for them, in the day I'm like a cloud so that heat will not kill them. In the night, I'm like a pillar of fire so that they'll see the road and not fall inside gutter. I kept their clothes, kept their health, kept them, kept their children, no sickness. And yet, all they could turn and say is that I have not done nothing for them. So he said, Moses, shift. Let me kill, let me clear them one time. So some of you, your attitude could be the reason why you are still down. Your attitude could be the reason why you are still blessed. Your attitude... So any favor that you enjoy from today, whether it is from God or from man, be grateful. Don't take it for granted and stop sending that rubbish. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Thanks, man. Maybe next time somebody tell me that thanks, I will stone, if I find stone, I will stone you. Thanks. That's it. That's, that's, that. So everything I did for you, you just summarize it. The cancer I gave you, the wisdom I gave you, that advice that redeemed your life from destruction. All you could do was to send me one word. Thanks, man. No, don't devalue things. Always be grateful. Always be grateful. I want you to take the next five minutes. Stand to your feet. And find the reason this morning to say, God, thank you. I can't hear you thank you, Say, God, thank you.